Okie dokie, so take number two on this bloody video because I had my microphone muted when recording first time round. Oh god, you can see at the top left I've already spun like five laps around here. Um, but welcome back to another video guys, this is uh, Lambretta Linz. Yes, that is my last name. Uh, and this is made by Kevin Fwaler and it is essentially it's, uh, it's a Loretta Linz or Hurricane Mills MX, whichever you want to refer to it as. Uh, replica track. Now I'm guessing that it is not called Loretta Linz just on the basis that it is a paid track on MX Bike Shop and I imagine getting real names involved when the track's paid for etc could probably get you in big trouble. So it's better that it's more of a... Oh god, what's the word? More of a parody. I mean, par par maybe not parody. It's just, it's inspired by, it's probably the best way to do it. This man and his bloody capybaras. <laughs> Oh god, I think Kevin's got a bit of a bit of a passion for the old capybaras. They're on his uh, Patekas, pot I can like, never know how to bloody pronounce it. Track that I played in a one two five race the other day, uh, and they're here again. So maybe maybe there is uh, there is trademark now. There is there is thing. So uh, before I realised that my mic wasn't working, <laughs> I was just saying that I've not really um, I've not seen a whole lot on this track. I don't think I've seen any races held on it. Uh, I've also not really seen much in the way of online servers on it either. And I think in terms of gameplay of it, I mean, I've never played it until today, um, but I'd only ever seen, I think it was like the day of or the day after it was released. I remember Rum streaming it in Discord, but that's about it. I've not seen, uh, seen much else. And riding around doing a few laps, I expected it originally be like uh, Kelvin's usual track where they are just absolutely wide open you know you can hold it wicked everywhere but he's done a f I think he's done quite a good job on the roughness on this track um it, they, it's not loads don't get me wrong they're not massive bumps but there's just small bits of chop going into some of the corners that upset the bike a little bit and make you really think about your line selection a bit more which I do enjoy I think it's a good track and he's built it really well now Obviously, I couldn't have a track in the game that's got my name in it and not play it. That would just be wrong. I think there's two tracks now. There's obviously this one, which is Lambretta Linz. And there's also one of the ones I covered in the four hour track competition video. I don't know if that has been publicly released at this point. But if you've not seen it yet, go and go and find the video on it because I do have it in the description. But again, there was another another Linz track in there, which I did enjoy. That one, that one is wide open. That's an absolutely huge jump. So that's more, that is a definitely a, a more fun style, the more realism style track. And I, I should probably try the inside on these 10 commandments one lap. I've gone around the outside like Eminem and the trailer park girls every single time. So I do need to mix up my line choice a little bit. Actually, let me start now. I'm going to try and just do a lap of taking all the lines I wouldn't usually take. I, I feel like I get, if you excuse the pun, stuck in a rut <laughs> where I take the same lines over and over and over again and just never experiment out a little bit. So let me do that. And then some of these outsides, they seem very, very quick. And oh God, I want to see. Do you reckon I can, do you reckon I can double that from there to there? I feel like the outside's not, there's not much of a, uh, a lip on there. Let me, let me turn around real quick. We'll do some experiment in this video. Why not? Uh, and oh, I will, I, I pray I remember because I always say some videos I'm going to forget. I'm going to put like the, uh, oh, the bike in the description as well. I really, really do like this bike. Absolutely exploded that out. Let's not try that again. This bike is a replica of uh, Colt Nichols real life bike. And I saw this bike originally in one of Tommy Sell's videos a while ago on YouTube. And I thought, oh my god, that Honda is so nice. And we've got it in game now. So awesome. I think it looks really, really nice. Uh, I will probably have to delete the model swap with the hangars because it's just the red throws it off a little bit, in my opinion. Although, saying that, the bar pad and the forks are, are red still as well. So <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. But either way, uh, I think the actual graphics themselves look really nice. Uh, I, in particular, I'm not sure what it is. I've always, always been a fan of uh, fluo yellow. Uh, most, most of the time, it got going with black, of course. Um, but when I was on MX Simulator and I was privateer for a season, and I made my own skins. Uh, I made a black and fluo yellow uh, yam, which I, which I rode quite a lot, which I was a big fan of. And it was actually inspired originally by my old road bike that I had in real life, which is an MT-07. It's a 700cc Yamaha, uh, and the colour scheme that I had on that was actually uh, grey and fluo yellow, and it had complete fluo yellow wheels, uh, and I just, I loved it, I thought it looked so, so nice. Uh, sold it now, because 
I just didn't really ride it often enough to warrant the bloody insurance. Like it was so expensive. I was quite <laughs> quite young when I had it. it was, I think it was something like two thousand for a year. Which, let's be honest, if I'm spending that much and I'm not actually using the bloody thing, there's really no point. Uh, but I'm quite a I feel like I'm quite a safe rider in terms of I will not go out and ride without wearing everything that I should do. I, I, I see people round round these parts by me that when it gets hot, for example. I'll just go out on a, in a t-shirt and I'm like, if if you get one thing wrong and you throw that down the road, you are going to skin yourself alive. That is absolutely disgusting. So I'd always, um, I mean, if, if, if it wasn't, I didn't wear full leathers because I don't think it's that kind of bike, but I'd wear like the um, the padded jeans with the, uh, the armor plates in them and jacket and so on and so forth. So I wore the right thing. And because of that, I can never just like get on my bike and go for a quick ride if I wanted to. I always felt like it was... An occasion to get dressed up and, and go out and a lot of the time around by me is you spend most of the time bloody filtering through traffic and stuff anyway there's not it's not like if you go to spain for example and you've got or, or, or even say america where you've got nice wide open roads obviously spain you've got nice uh, winding hill roads in america you've got more like flat open open roads to ride on it's done like here a lot of it's stop start traffic in the middle of a town uh, if you get on the motorway for example quite often there'll be speed limit restrictions down to 50 miles an hour and just cameras absolutely everywhere waiting to get you and when you've got that much power underneath you a lot of the time you want to use it so it was very very hard to always restrain myself and i'm like why why am i riding this bike that is capable of going very 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 fast i won't tell you how fast i've been on it because that might be um self-incriminating but <laughs> it can go very very fast <laughs> and you just can't utilize it you know it's very very frustrating uh, my parents never they, they they ride bikes all the time they absolutely love them they've got two of their own they've both got a normal normal size bike and they've got uh, mini bikes uh, one's got a grom one's got oh god what is it gonna annoy me now a benelli oh, yes they've got one they, they, they've got mini bikes and they've got normal bikes just to go out riding on uh, as and when so they absolutely adore it i think the only i might get another road bike anytime soon is something that's a bit in between so i can just go green lane in i think that'd be incredibly fun there are a few uh a few green lanes not that far from me which kind of gives me a bit of a, a bit of a motocross kick in a sense doesn't it um i mean speaking of motocross irl a lot of you guys have been asking for more more irl videos i've genuinely i haven't gone riding in so long now and i'm probably not going to either we've reached that point now in the uk where a lot of the motocross just kind of gets put on hold where the weather's just that shit I mean, it's Saturday today at me recording this. You're probably seeing it on the Sunday. But the the entire of this week it has been absolutely torrential rain. Uh, literally two days ago, I looked out in my back garden and it was just flooded. You know, there's just standing water everywhere. And it's just not very nice. I, I know that there's some people out there that absolutely adore riding in the wet. They find it so much fun. I'm, I'm indifferent to it. Like, I'll do it if I have to. But if I'm honest, I'd rather stay at home in, in the warm than go out and get freezing cold fingers, get absolutely soaked through. And it's just not a bit of me. And not to mention the cleanup afterwards. I am a very, very lucky guy in the fact that when I do ride, my dad actually washes my bike for me. Uh, mostly for the reason that he's very OCD. And if I was to wash it myself, he would then go back and do it again anyway, because everything has to be absolutely perfect. But I'm not complaining because obviously I've, I get away with not washing the bike but at the same time there is that sense of guilt of right I've, ha I've had the fun going and riding now you get the shit part of cleaning a really really muddy bike and probably spending a good few hours trying to get it perfect again so there's a few um, there's a few moving parts in there as to why I don't really ride throughout the winter and in the wet I used to ride all the way through when I was younger on like 65s 85s when I was doing and like mini championships but now it's just a fun thing and i i don't really race at all there's there's absolutely no point in it uh it's much nicer just staying at home in the uh, in the warm and play a little bit of bikes and wishing i was ever this good irl i i did see someone commented on one of my videos the other day saying they wish they was as good as bikes as they are irl and i can't wrap my head around that i can't understand how you can be better in person than you are in a video game like how do you manage to shut your brain off at irl and just go for it but in a game it's more difficult I, i've never never been able to grasp that it's like obviously in this game i can send it as hard as possible and know that i'm not going to go to the hospital uh, like there are no consequences for my action which will lead me into another topic in a second actually um but irl i'm, I'm such a 
I try and be such a precise, calculated person. I always, which is probably why I like hard pack a lot. I really, really struggle to just kind of ease up, let the bike dance underneath me and do my own thing. I'm very calculated. I try to apex things as much as possible, especially on hard pack tracks. And it's probably why I struggle so much in sand and deep ruts is I try and like override the bike a little bit sometimes to be very, very precise, which I know is like the opposite of what you should do. Um, but that was leading me on to the point actually is in video games where there's no issue with kind of crashing you know you don't hurt yourself there's no penalty to crashing you just respawn and you carry on i think that is a massive reason as to why it's so hard to build a realistic game because let's take supercross for example um obviously irl pros know their limit they know how far they can jump uh, if they try and send an extra jump but they aren't a thousand percent sure they'll make it they will probably want themselves and they'll probably go to the hospital so that keeps everyone's speed at a certain level and you're not going to be hitting any like disgusting insane fives through rhythm sections and, and things like that but in video games we haven't got that issue we can try and hit that same section a hundred times just to hit that line once for a hot lap and there's no downside to it really which is probably why it's so difficult to make probably one-to-one -one scale realistic tracks because when there's not that fear of wadding yourself people are going to go for the biggest and most disgusting lines possible so you're never truly going to get something that is realistic unless you introduce some sort of a system where you have injuries and i'm trying to think how it could be best implemented well, i can't see how it could be implemented in a good way without it being incredibly annoying so let's say for example if you crash you can't play for 10 20 minutes obviously if you're first starting out on the game you're gonna crash uh, i'm talking about like bad crashes by the way not just tip overs and corners i'm on about if you're like if i was to send it fourth gear wicked through here and go over the bars and the bike does multiple flips maybe you can't play for 10 20 minutes almost like a competitive cool down in um csgo for example I, new players would absolutely hate it because they wouldn't be able to play the game more than they would be able to play it um, but then let's say it does get implemented in some sort of way that works and you hop onto multiplayer that's when it could get a bit tricky maybe it should be removed from multiplayer because let's say <laughs> you get lag punted across the map you, sorry you can't play for an hour now because the internet was been uh, was a bit boofed can you see how that can go wrong or let's say somebody is really fed up with you they don't care about playing the game anymore for the rest of the day and they absolutely yeet you into oblivion and and you get a penalty because of it and they do but they don't care but you you just hopped on you want to play more than the five minutes that you have maybe it could be a, a good way of implementing it in single player as opposed to multiplayer i'm not sure but we i, I don't know if we'd ever get a, a very very your realistic game of motocross game at least um i did want to say quickly i'll probably do a video on it but if i'm talking about realism in motocross games i i played the latest development build of track they are last night which isn't released to the public yet i've never ever ever played a motocross game that has got the traction so right so the front end actually grips which is nice the bike turns how you'd expect it to turn based on the lean angle and such but for the first time ever in a video game, I feel like you can actually turn the bike with the back wheel. Like you can steer with the rear of the bike and control it, which I've never ever had before. I feel like on bikes, there's a very, very fine line, you know. You either, you get traction and you flat track everywhere, or you spin a little bit and the back end comes all the way around. If I, I can do like controlled, like donuts, if that makes sense, like slide in the back end. Um, but they're only on a, like a really massive, um, like turn in arc turn in circle and i could never ever ever do that in a fast way and like not a way that benefits you at all i mean sliding the back end on this game will always 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 be slower than tracking everywhere whereas on track they are i don't think that's the case like you can get some really tight insides lock up the back end get on the gas and really spin the back end around and it's so nice and it's so rewarding and they are making such big moves i'm so excited to see where that game will be in another couple months or a year's time 
Uh, I've asked if they can work on the body position a little bit, like make it look a little bit more natural rather than bunched up, and they're doing that already. And it's it's nice, it's lovely to see. I just wish that we had a few more uh, a few more motocross tracks to work with. I keep seeing screenshots of people posting tracks that they're riding on that they're working on, and I just want them all to be done. I just want to play them all. I'm so greedy, and I'm very very much looking forward to that. And I just wish that was something that more games had is a realistic traction engine. I can't imagine the probably the science and the maths that goes into working out how grip works on these games because it's not just oh you've got 10 grip as opposed to you've got five grip or you've got 20 grip going up and down or ways like that there's so many formulas that must go into it and i saw the track they are guys uh, going on about like there's calculations involved based on how much of the tire is touching the the ground at any certain point and obviously the sides of the tire and the the middle of the tire have different values and so on it's i was like oh my god i remember i dropped out of uh, a level maths at school I, I, i'm not sure what the equivalent would be uh, across across the pond but in the, the uk guys will know what i mean when i say a level stuff it's fucking difficult uh, i dropped out of that at school so how i'm expected to know this i have no idea i'm, I'm just gonna hop on the game and i'm just gonna ride i'm not gonna worry about all of the all of the uh the scientific and oh, mathematic equations that go on behind the scenes but this is why i can never make games it's far too big brain for me uh, there's some of you guys out there uh very very smart individuals and very very clever at what you do so who, who says that you need to be really um Oh, really good at everything as long as you've got your one specific area that you uh, that you do and you enjoy fair play go at it go off king and oh i've realized that i've just been speaking for 16 minutes about nothing basically i don't think i've spoken about the track once um so i'm very sorry about that kevin if you're watching this but uh, i think this is a really nice track it's very very flowy it's nice that there's multiple lines in each corner uh, i can't speak on how competitive all the different lines would be but it's nice to at least have that variety i feel like there's one probably specific line around the entire entire track and that's it um but i hope you guys have enjoyed the video i've certainly enjoyed playing this track i think he's got the erode kind of erode i need to stop i keep mixing up my words it's got the roughness really bang on um and in terms of a loretta's replica i think it's done a very very nice job as well even though it's not loretta's it's lambretta's um oh did i say oh, i might not i don't know if i've even said this now actually but i said it in the previous recording rest in peace loretta lynn jesus um yeah that's absolutely that's such a shame well see if you've been around motocross for any any particular length of time you, you know about the Loretta Lynn's event and she's been such an integral part of the sport for, for years and years and years now so it's really really sad now don't get me wrong I knew absolutely nothing about her music I just know that she's a country singer I'm much more of a uh, Dolly Parton fan myself uh, but it's still sad to see I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't affect anything in terms of uh, like that, that event I, I wouldn't have thought so I imagine the ranch is probably passed down to other family uh, and they'll probably keep that tradition going i can't see them just taking over and disrupting an event that's been going on for so many years um i do remember seeing <laughs> uh actually so this might be a little bit rude to say it's not rude it's a compliment really but <laughs> i um, is, did anybody ever used to watch the heart of motocross uh it's a, like a film slash documentary type thing it's on youtube if you want to go and watch it um, it's quite old now but basically it it was like a year of loretta's watching various riders show up and they had rider di francesco there when he was on a cobra 50 and he was the youngest person to ever win it my god his mum oh my god what a queen she is she's so so attractive and i'm not sure why that's just popped into my brain but i used to always 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 watch the heart of motocross like religiously every single week before i'd go riding just like inspire me and pump me up a little bit um and it kind of it gives a nice little how do i word it it's nice seeing the behind the scenes and it just makes you realize kind of what the parents put into it and if you're a bit younger and you don't quite realize how much time money and effort your parents put into letting you go riding every weekend just watch it it will really really open your eyes such a good uh, such a good film such documentary i definitely definitely recommend it and yeah, I think we, we don't really get much of that anymore where you get really deep into the heart and the behind the, seat, behind the scenes of things and stuff that you wouldn't usually see. But it's, it's all good stuff. I'm, I'm glad that that's really randomly popped into my head. I'm going to go and watch that tonight. I'm going to make a, a spare little hour or two and, and sit down and, and enjoy it. I 
God, it's so, so good. 100%. Go and watch it if you haven't already. Um, that'll do it for me. Sorry for uh, basically waffling for this entire video. I've had a little bit of a, uh, little bit of a, a rant today, but... I don't know why there's a, uh, a track in the game with my name on it and I've not played it until now. So I do apologise, Kevin. Very, very good track. Keep it going as always. And catch you guys in the next video. Farewell. Goodbye. Peace. One of them make it, I guess, you know, I live with the criticisms. People are giving up, and they put it upon the pedestal. A pendant for your thoughts, but I never asked for change. My work ethic's ridiculous, and yours is not the same. I swear to God that I wrote it all with a pure intention. The truest testament with no excessive false aesthetics. You couldn't imagine a fathom the effort I'm exuding. My heart and soul in the ship, and yet they forced me to prove.